Hey, what's going on, guys? My name is Sukmoth, back again with another video, and I got a very special guest with my very first dual come ever. Go ahead and introduce yourself. Hey, guys, I'm Russian Backhand. Uh, I'm mainly a Black Ops 2 player and commentator, and I play zombies in there as well. And also Minecraft, so thanks for the uh, intro. Yeah, absolutely, guys. He's got a great channel. I'd go ahead and check him out. And I'm really glad that I could help out your channel if I can at all. Um, anyways, let's get right into the commentary topic for today. Uh, what I wanted to talk about is an article that I read a couple days ago, and I'll try to link it to you if I can find it, but... Um, basically, MLG and Game Battles and other competitive websites like that are pushing for Call of Duty Pro games to be aired on real sports channels like ESPN and popular networks for esports to actually go on the big screen, if you will. It has always just been on YouTube and for the the diehard, excuse me, gamers to see. And now they're trying to make that accessible to everyone. So one of my big concerns, and you can comment on this, uh, people aren't going to understand what's going on. You know, there's a lot of people that are you know very old and they're traditionalist basketball fans that you know they're gonna see this black ops 2 gameplay and they're gonna see you know optics screaming their heads off at each other they're not gonna understand what's going on because call of duty is a very strategic game that if you don't know what's going on you're gonna get very confused what do you think about this yeah uh honestly even if i watched it i would obviously know what they're doing and what they're playing but i wouldn't necessarily understand their whole uh I don't know how to explain this. The the whole lingo. Like, yeah, the, I want to understand call outs, it's just a whole different game. It's it's so yeah. much different than pubs. It's way different than any yeah. commentary that you see. It's right. full out I don't know, hardcore doing yeah, this for no living doubt. gaming, so Yeah, for sure. Uh you know, when I made the the video on the um the why the gamers in society and thing like that, I'll link that to you if you don't know what I'm talking about. But I noticed that there's a generation gap, and a lot of people don't uh, understand um, what what vi modern video games are about, and because of that, it creates a lot of ignorance, and people that are old, they see, you know, I, I don't know how traditionalist sport fans are going to see killing being on ESPN, because that is how they see it, and there's no way of really changing that, I don't think, but nonetheless, that is how people will see it, and I don't think people were very happy about seeing that on ESPN, and, you know, the question is, are people going to really want to see ESPN, on ESPN, you know, sports replays of Opti Gaming vs. Envy? Yeah, um, this is, like, a big thing right now with, uh, gun control, if you're in America, I guess, mm -hmm. um, the, our government is telling us that Oh, these gamers, now that they're um, playing these shooter games, Black Ops 2, Grand Theft Auto, games like that, oh, they're playing these uh, horrible games that make them want to go blow up a school, and that's not at all how it is. When I play Call of Duty, I just play it for the fun of it. I, right. I don't. There's very, very, very minimum amount of people that actually feel obligated to go blow up a school now because they played Call of Duty. So yeah. even the politics are... Um, mixing in there as well so yeah it's a big topic and one last concern for me and you can comment on this as well um most gamers even yourself saying that you're not a game battles you know uh you know mlg player i i am so but i would love to see this obviously but even you you wouldn't probably watch this would you i mean this is espn you got to think there's about 20 million call of duty players but out of those 20 million how many people are actually going to watch this broadcast you know that no people that where their favorite sport is baseball or football are going to watch it. So how many people from the Call of Duty community are going to represent and put views on this thing? Yeah, I'll, I'll use your number of 20 million. Um, basically, this is just one of the competitions. Uh, we're talking about that Major League Gamer Winter mm -hmm. Championship, I believe, right? Right. And right. Uh, the first place winner on for Black Ops 2 gets $20,000. So we're talking yeah. about people who basically make a year's living off of this yeah. with with their few different uh, matches not, that they and do. And that's not including advertisements and YouTube videos. Overall, it's not it's not a bad living if you make it in the big times. Exactly. But there's... How many people are there in Optic? There's 15 people, right? It's 24. They got a full roster. 24. Okay. So, uh, yeah, I guess that there's just not enough demand for that. Right. On but only four, only four go to the tournament. It's a little divided up that much. Really? Yeah. Four. Wow. All right, one last thing I wanted to get into is the future consoles, and I know people have beaten the crap out of this topic, but I want to take a you know interesting turn on the topic, and that is how there's going to be such a large amount of commentators when this comes out. As you know, they're going to be able, people already are able to like live stream through their PS3 and Xbox 360 and uh, live stream Black Ops 2 gameplay. 
in the PS4, it's go- in the uh, Xbox 720, I presume is what they'll call it, it's going to be even easier to do just that because of the, the, the features that they've implanted in the system. So, you know, if you think about it, there's we're going to have to divide the views up so much amongst all of us. What do you think about this? Yeah, basically right now, you, you have to put hundreds and hundreds of dollars into your setup so mm-hmm. that eliminates a lot of people that are uh, going to be doing this oh, live that, streaming and uploading. That, that's a very good point because one thing that separates a lot of people is the amount of time and the money that it takes to get into this because what a lot of people do is they'll buy like half the stuff they'll need like they'll get an HGP VR and, and you know maybe they'll get um, a, a, you know an okay laptop but w- when it comes to the time they have to buy their editing software and their nice headset everything like, like that. Exactly, all these things, then they decide that they don't have the money or they don't want to do it all that much because they realize how high demanding it really is to, you know, actually get your first video on YouTube. Exactly, and uh, so basically with the PlayStation 4, literally on the controller, you click share, and then you choose where you want to share it to, and you can be live streaming in a matter of seconds. Um, What that does is fills up YouTube with people who even are good and they're doing this or they absolutely suck and their quality is terrible um but the way i look at it is say that there's uh say there's one hour per day that people put into youtube say that's the average and if each video you watch is eight to twelve minutes long and you're watching what is gamer tag you're watching syndicate and you're watching uh t-martin and all of a sudden the time that you are putting into youtube watching youtube videos is way too much but now if there's a math a mass uh, spectrum of other U- or youtubers and commentators and everything uh, basically the view is that there's not enough views to go around for everyone so it's right. g- going to get messed up so and and what will happen is the rich get richer and the poor get poorer because white boy exactly. street will still be getting millions of views but everyone else is going to be getting a couple for every video because the exactly. fact of it is you know They already have their consumer base. Yeah, and if you look back at people's first videos, you know, I remember my first video particularly. It was a commentary on Village in MW3, and I thought it was the best best video on YouTube. But if I were to go (laughs) back and watch that video today, I would think that it was the worst video ever, you know? So, and people, when they first start off and they have these tools to upload to YouTube so readily, they don't exactly realize that the content they're making is bad. (laughs) You know, yeah. and, and they don't they get to skip all the tough steps that you and I had to had to get through, which is, yeah. you know, technical difficulties, th- hundreds, maybe even thousands of dollars of equipment, etc. Exactly. You got to buy so many things just to get started right now that it's it's uh, it just eliminates so many people who it's, weren't yeah. going to start out before. Precisely, because if you if you're going to upload with a dazzle and you're not going to buy a mic, you're just going to use the internal mic on your laptop. You simply stand no chance because you're yeah. going to get completely overshadowed by the big guys with the good quality. Yeah, because there's why would you watch really crappy stuff when you can just go watch good stuff? Because that, there's plenty of it. There's plenty exactly. Of it. There's plenty of it. There, there's yeah. no lack of high quality. In Call of Duty four days, maybe there was, but now there's not. Exactly. All right, yeah, it's, well, it's all HD and everything now, so... Exactly. All right, we'll, we'll end it on that note, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm My name's Slickmoff. My name's uh, Russian Backhand. And uh, his channel link will be uh, in the annotation on the screen and in the description, and we'll see you later.